We celebrate championships again this week on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Head coach Mark Track and NM State Women's Basketball captured their first outright regular season conference championship in 20 years with a win at home last weekend. Coach Track will drop by the studio to recap the win and the celebration. Senior night is this Saturday for Aggie men's basketball, and Aggie Vision had the chance to sit down with seniors Daniel Mullings and Chilin Apawe as they reflect on their NM State careers. And we finish today's show with head baseball coach Brian Green, who notched his first win as a head coach in a 12 inning thriller at newly renovated Presley Aski Field last weekend. We hope you sit back and enjoy. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. We're glad you could join us today on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Adam Young. NM State Women's Basketball is now officially the WAC regular season champs. The Aggies cruised to a 20-point win last Saturday against Texas Pan American in their final home game of the regular season. The win gave the Aggies their first outright regular season conference championship in 20 years. Joining me now is head coach Mark Track. He has the trophy with him here today. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. What a special night Saturday was. Yeah, it was a great night. I thought the kids played very, very well. You know, they got after it. We had some great performances. It was a great team effort. And uh, we had the six men out there, our crowd. I mean, I, I think we had between three and 4,000 mm -hmm. people there, and they were loud. And it was a real festive atmosphere after the game. They, they watched the celebration, the trophy celebration, and cutting down the nets. It, was, it really, really was a great day to be an Aggie or a great night to be an Aggie. You beat a good UTPA team by 20. Was that one of the best games your team has played in a while? Yeah, I felt that that even though we, we were winning, I didn't think we were playing our best basketball, especially in our last homestand, uh, our last two games. But I thought we put it all together. We shot the ball well. We defended. We actually out-rebounded somebody, uh, which, was, uh, which was amazing considering how we've been pounding on the boards recently. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it was a total effort. I, we, we, you know, we didn't turn the ball over a lot, and I got really good performances from our three top players. You never trailed. You jumped out to an early 11-point lead four minutes in. You mentioned the crowd, 2,000-plus. Or is your team able to thrive off that during the course of the game? Oh yeah, I, you know it, it, it's a big advantage. You know, the, it's uh, you know they get the adrenaline going, and you know when they hear the crowd just after every basket or after every great move, and the other team hears the crowd too. You know, it's just it's just really really big, and it's a real special feeling for our kids and, and the coaching staff. Just just hearing how engaged those people were was really meant a lot to everybody in our program. Our, our fans uh, were awesome, and and the Las Cruces, Las Cruces community, the way they've supported this team has been really really fun to watch another great game for Brianna Freeman another double double her eighth this season how about her progress from the beginning of this season to now well, from last year till now, it's it's uh, it's amazing. She averaged like four points a game last year, and from the beginning of the season, I mean, I, I felt she struggled a little offensively, uh, and now I think she's very dominant offensively. She just keeps on getting better and better. Got a great work ethic, great kid, the kid that you want representing your program. She's an engineering major, a straight A student, very very smart person, all put put together, you know, very very well. A great student, and now is becoming a great basketball player. So she's everything that we want to represent our basketball program. That's what we want our culture to be like. The postgame celebration was outstanding with the cutting down of the nets, the trophy presentation as well. What was that moment like for your coaching staff and also your players? Well, uh, for the coaching staff, we just sat back and we watched, you know, the celebrations for the players. You know, uh, uh, Sasha hoisted that trophy o over her head. It wasn't me because she's the one that scored all the points to get us there. So that moment was hers. Uh, the cutting down of the nets, that moment is theirs. But the coaching staff just st sat back and we just soaked it in and we watched them, you know, hoist that trophy. We watched them celebrate. We watched them cut down that nets. And I'll tell you what, there was a big smile on my <laughs> face. And when you see the look on those kids' faces that are going up the ladder and cutting down that nets and know that they They've worked really, really hard for a common goal, and that's what athletics is all about is, is, you know, just working for that common goal and achieving your goal and just the satisfaction and happiness all written all over their faces when they were cutting down and getting their little mm -hmm. bit, of, bit of history, a little piece yeah. of the net. That meant a lot to the entire coaching staff. I looked over at you with about 30 seconds left. You had the hands in the air, getting the crowd on their feet. Is that whole 30 seconds a blur for you? Uh, yeah, you know, and I think my players beat me to it. I turned around and saw the whole, you know, and my players were up getting, getting the crowd up and the crowd responded and, and uh, they responded better to the players than they responded to me anyway, you know, so it was, uh, 
Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, it, it, it just watching them all stand up there in, in, in unison and cheering for our kids and seeing the kids asking the crowd to, to stand up like that and having this, you know, the kids come off, uh, starters come off and getting to greet them as they come out and give them a hug and, and again, knowing that, that they had done something special. It, it was it was a really special moment, uh, I think. Uh, uh, it was a special moment in, uh, for our program and it was a special moment in my basketball career. When we return, coach and the trophy both return as well. We look ahead to the final road game of the regular season, so don't go anywhere. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome back to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The NM State women's basketball team will head to Chicago this week to take on the Chicago State Cougars in the final regular season game before the WAC tournament. To preview the game, Aggie head coach Mark Track is back with me in studio. Coach, you've clinched everything now. Do you approach this game any different because of that? Uh, you know, we, we want to get 20 wins. That, that's, uh, uh, that's pretty important. That's a goal for us, too. So hopefully get, <clears throat> have a 20-win season. Uh, you know, it's not going to be easy there. Despite their record, they're pretty tough, and they're pretty tough at home. And we struggled with them a little here, so I'm sure they're, they're not just going to let us, you know, glide to our 20th win. But, but that's important, and we approach it the same way, same prep. Uh, same everything. Hopefully we'll be able to get a couple of the kids in the game and, and kind of evaluate them before we get to the tournament. But, uh, but it's not an easy place to play and it will be a tough game. Nothing's ever easy. Just one game this week with Chicago State. What's your focus on in practice this week and also early next week as you lead into the WAC tournament? Well, we gave them off yesterday. We're going to give them off today. We're just going to watch film today and then start our usual uh, procedure. Uh, and we'll practice hard on Tuesday and then we'll kind of walk through the next couple of days and head over there. And then we got another few days to prepare for our first game of the uh, WAC tournament since we got a bye all the way to the mm -hmm. semifinals. So the next, uh, these last three weeks have played out well for us as far as scheduling. We had yeah. a week to prepare for Texas Pan Am, then we have a week for Chicago State, then we'll have a week for our first semifinal game. So it's, we're, we're getting a lot of rest at this time of year which is really good for our kids. You go into the WAC tournament as the team to beat, the number one seed, the buy into the semi. Do you feel like your players thrive on that? Uh, no, I think we thrive on being the underdog. I mean, we've convinced them that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's outside of our fans, of course, that are with us. It's us against the basketball world. You know, nobody thought that they were going to be that good. You know, we're 0 and 5, you know, and especially when we're 0 and 5 and we started that win streak. It, it was like other teams, other, you know, and I'll say it, other coaches seemed like they were, uh, they were embarrassed that they lost mm -hmm. to us. You know, comments like, man, you got to get up for everybody. Even these guys are so bad. You know, and I've seen, uh, you know, in their press conference and stuff. So we really played on that. We really played on, you got to go out and earn respect. You you got to get respect. Look, these people are so embarrassed they lost to you, you know, and, and these comments they're making after the game, you know, like we wouldn't have lost to you if we had prepared for your zone. You know, it's just stupid things like that. So the kids really, really, uh, really motivated. We really motivated them through that. And uh, we just it, it was a horse that I that I got on early and I rode it to death. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to continue to ride it because the kids really feel that they're out there playing uh, are playing for something to prove. You know, they're trying to prove that they are good. And, and that's how we're going to go in a, in a tournament like, hey, you know, uh, uh, go out and prove it. People, you still got to get the respect of, of winning this conference championship. And the kids have really bought into that and, and they really get, really, really get fired up. So I don't look at it as the number one seed. I'm still looking at it as we start, we we're picked to finish fifth. We started 0 and 5. You know, we're the underdog <laughs> going into that. And that's where the kids like to be. And that's where, that's where that, that'll be our mentality. The WAG champs finish out their regular season this weekend as they travel to the Windy City to take on Chicago State. Find out all you need to know about the game on nmstatesports.com. Congrats again, Coach. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Adam. When New Mexico State Sports Weekly returns, men's basketball seniors Daniel Mullings and Sheila Napalwe will share their experiences in an Aggie uniform as they look back at their great NM State careers. We'll be right back. NM State men's basketball will play their final home game of the regular season this weekend, which means it will be senior day at the Pan Am Center, and the Aggies will say goodbye to four good ones. Aggie Vision sat down with Daniel Mullings and Chilina Poway, two guys who have played big roles in their time in the Crimson and White. First, let's hear from Mullings, who will go down as one of the best to ever wear the Aggie uniform. Baseline. Senior Daniel Mullings proved early in his freshman year he was a real player. Mullings' offense was matched by great defense. That made him a natural leader during his career at New Mexico State. I think like being here just helped me, you know, become a better leader. 
And, uh, you know, Coach Menzies helped me, uh, helped me with that a lot. Well, Daniel's one that really embraced that, uh, that role. I mean, he's just, he's all in. You know, he's got full buy-in to, to what it means to be an Aggie. And the fans see that. You know, I think back to some of the, the moments with Daniel when he's playing with injuries and uh, playing with his jaw wired shut and just all kinds of uh, examples of, of his mental toughness and, his, and, and uh, you know, it's just his guts to, to want to be a great Aggie. Um, he embraced it. And, and I think that the, not only did the fans and the community uh, see it, obviously the locker room saw it. And it's, it's hard to not go hard when he's a teammate. And I think there's the intangibles that he brings to the game that aren't in the stats are, I can't, are countless. Um, you can't be on the floor and not play hard if, if Daniel's on the floor with you. You know, just to see myself grow from, you know, sitting out before I even, you know, played one game and then being a freshman, uh, seeing the, the seniors in that class, you know, the Wendell, um, Hom, and Ernst, and then just each year just growing and being able to mature. And, uh, you know, now it's just crazy that I'm the senior and I'm seeing, you know, the young guys like Pascal and Matt and Braxton, and those guys come up now. Like, it's, it's just crazy to see, you know, the transition. He had some, some uh, freshman woes in the beginning, like, like most young guys do. And, and, and we put, put him to the fire, you know, and the way he handled it was, I mean, phenomenal. You know, I put him through a lot of things uh, to help him mature and grow, and he embraced them all, and, and that's why he is the man he is today. During Mulling's days at New Mexico State University, he grew not only as a player, but as a member of a real Aggie family, too. At first, when I first got here, you know, uh, Paul Weir was kind of the guy that kind of recruited me first and brought me here, and then once I got into the program, then uh, me and Coach Messi started getting closer and closer as um, I started to mature a little bit and go up in the ranks. So um, our relationship has, has, has grown and we have a strong bond and I feel like it's been growing every year, um, year after year, you know what I mean? He's one of those guys like, like Chili, like Remy. I, I'm sure that this kid will, and I will be in contact you know, frequently for the, the remainder of my years on the planet. Um, He's just, that, he's just that special. And that's just a, a, a true testament to the, to the type of person that he is. You know, he's got a great smile. He's got a great attitude towards life. Uh, very, very, very uh, passionate young man. You know, his approach to the game itself is, has really been a blessing for the whole program. A vivid memory for all is the night Daniel subbed in after recovering from a broken little finger during his senior year. When, when we subbed in uh, Daniel that evening, uh, coming off that injury, it was like the roar was, you can't script that, you know, you can't plan that. And I uh, hadn't even thought about it actually until it happened. I was like, oh wow, he's back, you know, and they love him. I would always, I'm always gonna remember all our road trips and, you know, from all the years when we were here, um, all our road trips and, you know, since I've been here, we've been like, all the teams, we've been very close to each other. I feel like, uh, after I leave here, I'm going to be in contact with like all of these guys and we're going to have a friendship, you know, forever. All the way from South Africa, Chile Napawe plays his final home game with the Aggies on Saturday, and it's been quite the ride. Traveling from the other side of the globe, Chalitzi Napawi or Chile seemed like a natural player for Las Cruces. I, I had the nickname before I came here, so I didn't, you know, I didn't even know New Mexico was like, a, like all about Chile and stuff like that. And you know, and coming here was it was good. I mean, it was kind of like in the beginning when I got here, because I got here during the summer, and I was like, this place is hot. Like it was, yeah, because it's way hotter than you know South Africa and stuff. And I was just, and I kind of had to get used to that. I, was, I used to stay home, like I used to stay in the house a lot. Like I'd just be in the house because I didn't want to go out because it was so hot. Chile is obviously a guy that, you know, I recruited. I spent uh, uh, a lot of time uh, with him throughout the years, but I've also given him a lot of space and room to grow up and kind of interject my, my, uh, 
my will sometimes, you know, to, to, to give him some understanding and some things to think about uh, for him to make good decisions. So, and he hasn't always made great decisions, but he's always learned. And I think that's the most important thing with Chile. He's such a great sponge and such a great human being. During Chilitzi's five years at New Mexico State University, Marvin Menzies grew to be a father figure for a family of young Aggies. I'll say it's, it's, just, it's a father, it's a father and son relationship. You know, I mean, he, he loves me a lot, you know, like when, if I'm not doing, you know, the right things, he, he get on me and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, we just, we just, we have an amazing relationship and, you know, I love him to death and I know he, he loves me a lot too. He's one of them that uh, holds a very special place in my heart, like all of them do. But, uh, but he's a guy that, you know, that seeing his whole journey and where he's come from to where he is today, obviously puts him in a, a, in a, in a, at, a at a special place in all the players that I've coached before. Last year and this year, it's kind of like, like we just, we just have this amazing, like every, we, like everybody, we are all friends, you know, like we are all friends and we all care about each other and we all. Like we all kind of, we all do want to see, you know, everybody do good, you know. Chile has done a great job with um, leading by, you know, walking as an example of how to live your life. So I think just the way he walks, the way he, he, he talks, the way he handles his business is, is, is pretty much, uh, you know, uh, like I said, a, a walk and roll model for the younger guys. Along with all Aggie fans, Coach Menzi looks forward to the next stage in Napawi's career. He's, he's going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a great professional player. I'm sure he'll have a long career. Uh, so I'm just excited about watching him play and watching him, you know, grow his family and, and uh, you know, being able to go visit him and see him play when I'm old and grayer. Some special memories will always stand out for Chalitzi. My first time we won the work tournament, he was like, you know, that's like something that I feel like is going to stay with me for the rest of my life because just the, ex the excitement I had and, and everything. But you know, I think like every, every moment, like we, every time we win the West Tournament, I think it's just going to be something that I, it's like amazing that it's going to stay there for me. Last West Tournament, we won it. Uh, my mom came from Africa and then she was at the West Tournament. And, you know, when we won it, she came down and literally you know, she's like, oh, she's like maybe 55, and you know, we were jumping with her, and then she was in the middle of everybody, and you know, that was kind of like, you know, like a great moment for me. I'll never forget that. Next week, we conclude our senior send-offs with a recap of senior night and some final thoughts for the four NM State seniors. After the break, head baseball coach Brian Green will join me to discuss his team's first home games of the season. Don't go anywhere. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The New Mexico State baseball team held their first home games of the season last weekend in front of great crowds at the newly renovated Presley Askew Field. On Saturday, the Aggies picked up a thrilling 12-inning win to give first-year head coach Brian Green his first win as the head coach of the Aggies. Yeah. Brian Green is with me in studio. Coach, congrats on that first yeah. win. A little emotional post game after that one? Totally, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, they've all been emotional, but yeah, when that went down and, you know, we had a huge crowd mm -hmm. all weekend was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've got some alums and some Diamond Club people come onto the field with hugs and fist pumps. Our kids, you know, the way that we went in the 12th in a walk off fashion with as much pressure it has built up for them. So yeah, it was personally really emotional and I was just pumped for our guys. You know, it was, it was really cool to see. You mentioned the crowds. You had almost 2,000 Friday. A yeah. really good crowd yeah. on Sunday. Great weather. Yeah. Is this what you envisioned when you took the job? Yeah, we're getting there. You know, and I just it was something that just from an optimistic standpoint, knowing how great this community is and the weather and how fun it is to go to a college baseball game. Uh, to put those type of to put those type of numbers together that we did this weekend was really impressive. And I'm like, you know what? This RB thing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it going. Uh, hopefully we can stick some out there next weekend and, and get it going for a second home weekend. You know, the weather will be warmer, but yeah, you feel it and you go, you know what, that we can fill this place up. We can actually do some, some big things with crowds and you saw it. On the field, a great weekend offensively, especially those last two games. It was awesome, Adam. You know, we talked about uh, yesterday, I said, guys, the team that showed up here on Friday at three o'clock before a six o'clock game and the team that exited the field at five o'clock on Sunday as the series was over was completely different. And we're actually moving towards the team that we want to be. A lot of competitive spirits that we saw, both from the starting perspective on the mound 
And then offensively, yeah, we're, we're starting to get it going. You know, the quality of bats are getting ramped up. I don't know how many points our batting average jumped this weekend, but there's a feeling that we're starting to get, as, as you can see, you know, we're, when we're offensive right now. And it's, it feels good. It's competitive. Um, I like where we are. Who impressed you individually, offensively? You know, Mac keeps coming. Uh, Paulson is stringing it together. Uh, Umphreys is showing some power. You look at, again, A.J. Duran. Uh, here's a walk-on kid who's just nothing but competitive and mm -hmm. has fight. Uh, he's hitting 364 and he's just competitive, you know, and, and we're looking to get that type of spirit. Lucas Martinez shows up. It makes you feel really good about the two catchers that we have right now. Mike Barrientos steps in. He gets an yeah. opportunity and shows that he is going to be as competitive and wants to fight. So, you know, we've really gone at him from two weeks ago, maybe looking at two or three guys that you feel really good about their competitive fight in the box. And all of a sudden this weekend, we're putting together six and seven. You get up to that type of eight and nine number, you got a chance to do some things. Northern Kentucky this weekend. What do you know about NKU? You know, they'll be similar to us again. They'll have a left-hander on the mound. They'll have two right-handers. Uh, they'll have a couple of guys at the end of the game. They've struggled a little in the middle of the game uh, from, a, from a bullpen perspective. They won't have a lot of team speed. They'll have two guys in the middle that can hit. I know Todd, their head coach, very well, just being from UK. He's a, he's a good person. He's a good coach. They'll be fundamentally sound. Uh, it should be a really competitive series for us. The Aggies return home this weekend. They will battle NKU in a three-game set Friday and Saturday. Good luck this weekend, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. We thank you for joining us on today's episode of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.